There are so many different languages and tools that you need to learn in the world of data engineering today. But the bigger question then is, what exactly do you need to learn to get your foot in the door in 2023? Let's get into it. How to become a data engineer. There are generally three ways that you could get into tech. Number one is get a degree in college. Number two, coding bootcamp. Number three, self-taught. I've been in tech for over seven years and I personally went the self-taught route. Before we actually dive into steps into what you actually need to learn to get your foot in the door of data engineering, I wanna first introduce you to the mindset you need to have when learning how to become a data engineer, when learning how to code, when learning how to use all these different data tools. Number one, please understand that it's not going to be easy. There's a reason that data engineers are paid so well or software engineers in general. The reason that we're paid so well in tech is because we're willing to learn what a lot of other people aren't willing to learn. Especially if you're self-taught or going to coding bootcamp route where you're not getting your four-year degree, where it could be much more challenging to get your foot in the door. Please understand that the reason we're paid so well is because it is not an easy job. Number two, Please understand that you don't learn how to code by only reading books, by only watching video after video after video, even though you're watching this video. You learn how to code by building. You learn how to code by making mistakes. You learn how to code by making mistakes over and over and over again until you learn from it and improve on it so that you don't have to make those same mistakes either on the job, if not even worse, in a technical interview, which could prevent you from getting a job. Now, let's get into it. So let's first start with the basics and try to give you a broader understanding of what you need to learn. There are so many different programming languages that you can learn from Python to Java. There's even JavaScript, right? So many programming languages that exist in the world today. But in the world of data engineering, there are two languages, one programming language, one query language that I want to introduce to you that I think every aspiring data engineer and every data engineer should know today, right? Number one is Python and number two is SQL. These two languages are the fundamental skills of every data engineer in this space today. So then why do I introduce these two primary languages Python and SQL is because by learning Python and by learning SQL, you then will be able to use other tools that every data engineer needs to use today. For example, if you know Python, you can now use Pandas, you can use NumPy, Apache Spark, Flask, the Django, you name it. If not even Airflow, which is an orchestration tool, which I'll go over in a little bit. And if you learn SQL, then you will be able to more easily work with databases like Postgres, MySQL, SQLite, Amazon RDS, Oracle, you name it. So by learning Python, by learning SQL, it will now give you the ability to work with a bunch of other tools that'll help your job become even that much more easier. And to be honest, be able to work with other things that you would need to work with on the job. Next, the command line. I remember when I first witnessed the command line on my machine over seven years ago, and just being terrified. The first thing I thought about was the matrix. <laughs> the command line is not as scary as it seems. The command line is your tool. You can use the command line to send requests. You can use the command line to build your own database within your own machine. The command line is an extremely important tool that every developer needs to learn. Now, if you're new to learning Python, SQL, and the command line, I'll make sure to put a link in the description below to my own personal cheat sheet. Hopefully this helps you out on your way to becoming a data engineer. Link in the description below. Next, I wanna go over how long should you expect to learn these three things from Python to SQL to even using the command line? I think it really depends on your schedule and your availability on learning how to code. If you're married, you have a family, or maybe some people are working two to three jobs like I used to a couple years ago, you don't have a lot of time to distribute to only learning code. So in that case, I would say it probably take you around six to 12 months if you only have, let's say, two hours per day, if not maybe, five to six hours a week to learn how to code. Now, if you have the ability to put in as much effort as you want into learning how to code into data engineering and you name it, let's say 20 to 40 hours per week, I would expect myself to be able to understand how to write Python, to understand how to write SQL, and obviously by learning all of this, you'll also be able to understand how to use the command line in the last three to four months, okay? But again, please understand, don't be too hard on yourself if you don't understand this in three months. Don't get too hard on yourself if you notice that it's taking you longer to learn how to program. It's totally fine. 
that's part of it. You're learning a brand new language, an alien language that you've never learned before. So then, why do you need to learn Python, SQL, and also the command line? Because by learning these three things, you then will now be, have the ability to work with data warehouses and write ETL scripts. If you don't know, what is data warehousing? Let me explain. Imagine you have different boxes filled with various items and these items and boxes are scattered all over your house. Imagine when you need to find what you need, it would be kind of difficult to find, right? Now imagine you have a single warehouse where all the items are neatly stored and organized. It would be easier to find what you need when you need it, right? So that's essentially what a data warehouse is. A data warehouse is a large centralized repository of data. And that data comes from different sources. It can come from CRMs, it can come from your product data, sales data, you name it. So what a data warehouse does is that it stores all of this information in a structured way, making it easier for you to find the data you need to make the business decisions that need to be made. Now let's understand what ETL is. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. And this is the process of actually moving the data into that warehouse. You cannot get that data without the process of ETL or it could be ELT as well. So then what is ETL? Let's start with E, extract. This is where you pull or extract data from different sources. This could be databases. Again, this could be an API. This is where you collect your data. Then what is T in ELT? This is transform. Once we have the data, it's now time to transform it. What could this mean? This could mean cleaning up the data, handling missing values, converting data types, or creating new data by combining different data fields. The goal is to ensure the data is clean, consistent, and ready for analysis, right? Last but not least, let's now talk about the last letter in ETL, which is load, extract, transform, and load. So finally, what we need to do next after we extract the data, after we transform the data, we need to load that data to where? Into the destination, into the data warehouse, it could, or into the database, or into the data lake. Because now once the data is in the warehouse, the data is now available for querying and for analysis. So in a nutshell, that is what data warehousing and ETL is. So now that you know what data warehousing is and what ETL does, these two things are extremely important for data engineers. So learning how to use a data warehouse, let's say like Snowflake or a data lake, Databricks. So one thing you can also learn is how to write a custom ETL script. Now, one thing that we actually specialize here at Airbyte is ETL. <laughs> so what we do for here at Airbyte is we actually do that entire process for you where we extract the data from the source. We can normalize your data or if you use our open source software, you can also use dbt to transform that data for you. So using dbt or learning how to use dbt is extremely important and helpful as a data engineer as well. And then we also help you load that data into whatever destination you choose, whether if it's a Postgres database on your machine or a Postgres database on AWS, you name it. That's what we do for you on our end here at Airbyte. So these are things that you need to learn. Now, another thing that you need to learn is how to orchestrate your data. Data orchestration is huge and extremely important in data engineering. The two data orchestration tools that I can think of from the top of my head at this moment is Airflow and Prefect. They are two very popular tools that data engineers use today. Now, if you don't know what data orchestration is, let me explain. Orchestration, like orchestra. <laughs> Imagine you have an orchestra where you have various musicians playing with their own different instruments, with their own different music sheets that they need to read off of. But in order to create a harmonious symphony, you need a conductor to guide them, ensuring that they start and that they stop at the right times and play at the right tempo, right? This is what data orchestration does. It's very similar to this. In a data pipeline, you have various tasks or operations, right? For example, there's, again, there's data extra extraction, there's data transformation, loading, and analysis. These tasks need to be coordinated to make sure that they actually run in the correct order at the right times and that they handle any errors that might occur, right? That is what data orchestration does. Data orchestration is about automating and managing these different data operations, ensuring that everything works together and that they smoothly deliver the right data at the right time exactly when you need it. So as a data engineer, you'll often use data orchestration tools like Airflow, Prefect, or AWS Step Functions to manage these complex workflows. These tools will allow you to define, schedule, and monitor the data pipelines, making your job so much easier than it probably would be if you had to do this all on your own, writing custom scripts. Last but not least, let's talk about Kubernetes, Docker, 
cloud computing. As a data engineer, you'll often work with cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, GCP, Google Cloud Platform. What these platforms do is that they allow you to build and deploy your data pipelines in the cloud. Now, what does the cloud mean? Meaning an internet, meaning you're not self-hosting this stuff on your machine, where for example, some people might have a database on the machine, self-hosted, right, on-prem. Rather than having that data hosted on your machine, that data is hosted on someone else's server in the cloud, right, in the internet. So again, these platforms allow you to build and deploy your data pipelines in the cloud. And what this does is that it gives you access to powerful computing resources without needing to have these powerful machines at your house, at your office, you name it. Then next we have Kubernetes and Docker, which are also extremely important, but let's first start with Docker. So think of Docker as a way to package your application along with all of its dependencies into a single container. What this does is that it actually makes it easier to run your application on your machine or any other machine without ever worrying about whether it will work or not, right? Then let's talk about Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is like a, a conductor for these containers. <laughs> what it does is that it helps you manage and scale and deploy your Docker containers across multiple machines. So what Docker and Kubernetes does together, it's much easier to deploy and manage your applications wherever you need, whatever machine you're working on, which makes it so much easier. So these are the technologies that I recommend that you learn if you're trying to get into tech today. Hopefully this video helps. If you have any additional questions or is there anything I missed because there's so many more tools that you need to learn to get into tech today, let us know in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.